Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Dr. Kara Wada. I am a board certified allergy, immunology, lifestyle and functional medicine physician, certified life coach, and I have been helping people navigate living with complex immune system conditions like allergies, asthma, autoimmunity, and mast cell disorders for nearly 15 years. As someone who lives with a misbehaving immune system with Sjogren's disease myself, I understand firsthand the challenges that come along with a condition that currently has no FDA-approved treatments available for it. Today, I am excited to share some breaking news that is creating quite a buzz in the Sjogren's community. A medication called Nipocalumab has recently received fast track designation from the FDA for treating adults with moderate to severe Sjogren's disease. This comes only weeks after this same medication was granted breakthrough therapy designation, making it the first and only investigational treatment to receive both of these important FDA designations for Sjogren's. If you are living with Sjogren's or you know someone who is, this development could represent a huge step forward in treatment options. So today we're going to dive into what nipocalumab is, what fast track designation actually means, and how you might be able to participate in clinical trials if you're interested. Now, make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes here, but let's dive into what is nipocalumab. First, let's talk about what this medication actually is, that it is a medication that is being developed by Johnson & Johnson. It is a fully human, aglycosylated immunoglobulin G1 monoclonal antibody. Gosh, that's a mouthful. So let's bring down what all of those words mean. I'm going to work on translating as your immunology educator today. This is an antibody-based therapy. It looks like the letter Y, and it is going to target a specific receptor on our immune system cells called the neonatal FC receptor. We abbreviate that with a capital F, lowercase c, capital R, lowercase n. And that is the shorthand for that particular receptor. By targeting this neonatal FC receptor, it works to reduce the levels of circulating IgG antibodies. These are immune system proteins that provide our immune system memory. But in the case of Sjogren's disease and other autoimmune conditions, these IgG antibodies aren't just providing memory against infections we fought off. They're also showing memory for our own parts and pieces and creating an autoimmune or autoinflammatory response. So by decreasing the recycling mechanism of our immune system, we can decrease the number of these circulating antibodies and particularly these autoantibodies. For autoimmune conditions like Sjogren's where the immune system attacks the body's own tissues, this approach could really help reduce the autoimmune responses that are causing the symptoms and inflammation that we're dealing with. Sjogren's is an autoimmune disease that affects us from head to toe. We traditionally are taught and learn that it affects the moisture producing glands, which can result in these what are called pathognomonic or kind of characteristic symptoms of dry eyes and dry mouth. But really, when you talk with patients, and I talk with many, the symptoms that we seek help for more often are fatigue, joint pain, and other symptoms that can affect our organs from head to toe, in particular, our nervous system and how our body automatically engages in those nervous system activities. And we think that some of this nervous system effect may actually be causing some of the dryness too. It is totally different than, you know, kind of this basic surface level education that I received kind of going through my educational process. I've learned so much more in the last few years since my own diagnosis and really diving into the science. There currently are no FDA approved disease modifying treatments that are specifically approved for Sjogren's. So that makes this development really significant and really gives those of us in the Sjogren's community a whole lot of hope. So let's dive into what is FDA fast track designation? What does that mean? 
The FDA has established a fast track program to facilitate the development and to speed up the review of medications that are intended to treat serious conditions and really fill unmet medical needs. When we realize that Sjogren's affects upwards of one out of every 100 individuals, and we yet don't have an FDA-approved treatment, this is a big deal. So what does this mean? Logistically, it means there's going to be more frequent communication between the drug developer and the FDA. They're going to have additional opportunities to meet with these officials throughout the development process to ensure the most efficient drug development program and that they're working and coordinating together. They also engage in a rolling review. This allows the company to submit completed sections of its biologic license application or new drug application for review by the FDA rather than waiting till everything is complete. And lastly, it creates eligibility for accelerated approval and priority review. If relevant criteria are met kind of during these early stages, this can further speed up this approval process. Fast track designation is not the same as approval, and it does not guarantee that the drug will be approved or even that it will work out as it's hoped. But it does recognize that the condition that we are aiming to treat is serious, that there is an unmet medical need, and that this particular drug shows potential to address that need. The fact that nipocalumab has received both breakthrough therapy and fast-track designations suggests then that this preliminary clinical data from those early phase one and phase two clinical trials have been incredibly promising. So what is the current status of clinical trials? Nipocalumab is currently being studied in a phase three clinical trial, the IRIS clinical trial program for Sjogren's disease. And this includes two global phase three clinical trials. IRIS-1 is evaluating the efficacy and safety of nipocalumab, comparing that to placebo. And IRIS-2 is a long-term extension study that is going to continue to assess the drug's safety and efficacy over a longer period of time. These trials are recruiting patients with mild to severe Sjogren's disease across multiple countries, And these studies will evaluate how effective this medication is at improving symptoms, reducing disease activity, and enhancing the quality of life of those of us living with Sjogren's. So lastly, I want to talk a little bit more about my personal connection to clinical trials. I, Dr. Kira, am actually a participant in a Sjogren's phase three clinical trial myself. I am not in the nipocalumab trial. I am in the OASIS trial, which is looking at dazodalapep. But I have this unique perspective of being on both sides as a healthcare professional, as a physician who takes care of patients with Sjogren's, and as a trial participant myself. And it has given me some pretty unique insights into what this process is like. And I can tell you that being a part of research that could potentially help millions of people with Sjogren's has been incredibly meaningful. This clinical trial process is thorough and participating has helped me better understand what my patients go through when they are considering experimental treatments. So how do you look into participating in a clinical trial? If you are curious, clinical trial curious, there are some steps you can take. First, you can talk to your rheumatologist or whoever, whatever doctor is helping take care of your Sjogren's disease. Your specialist is going to be the best person to really look at those initial criteria, maybe help you determine if it is worth reaching out. You also can visit clinicaltrials.gov. This is a database of clinical studies conducted around the world, although it is a US-based website, it incorporates clinical trials globally. And you can search for keywords like nipocalumab or Sjogren's to find clinical trials that are currently running and recruiting patients. Each listing is going to include information about eligibility criteria, so how old you are, what your labs need to look like, where they're located, and the contact information for each study and study site. You also could check out the clinical trial website associated with the company that is developing the drug. In this case, that would be Johnson & Johnson. 
Joining patient advocacy groups like the Sjogren's Foundation is often a great way to learn about clinical trials. And that is how I learned about the OASIS trial. I had filled out a form months prior and received an email when that clinical trial started recruiting. I found out that there was a location about an hour from where I live and kind of went through the criteria, had a rough idea that I thought I might qualify and reached out to the local contact for that clinical trial. When you're considering clinical trial participation, it is important to understand that there are specific inclusion and exclusion criteria. Participation is voluntary. You can withdraw at any time along the way. And there can be both potential risks and benefits that you need to think through. You'll also have to think about the commitment because ideally, you want to be in the frame of mind that you're, you know, you're planning on trying to stick it out and go through the whole trial. That's how we get the best data. So thinking through the trial that I'm participating in was over a year long. So I had to really think about, okay, where am I now during that enrollment process, which was last summer? And where might I be with life and all the things <laughs> that year, 15 months later? What could this mean for the Sjogren's community? You know, the development of nibocalumab, dalapep, represent hope for many of us in the Sjogren's community. If and hopefully when approved, it will be the first disease modifying treatments specifically for Sjogren's disease. And this could potentially address not just individual symptoms and kind of band-aid approaches, but really focusing on the underlying disease process itself. For a condition that affects an estimated 4 million Americans and countless others worldwide, having targeted treatment options really is going to be transformational. It's important, though, that we may need to maintain realistic expectations. The drug is still in trials, and we won't see those full results for a period of time probably at least 18 months to two years when we might see that go up for review and hopeful approval if things look good. I am incredibly hopeful about the future of Sjogren's treatment. I think this is just the beginning. And really, we have the attention of those that are doing this research and development that, hey, there are a ton of us over an untapped market. When we're thinking about, you know, drug development, that is important. They need to realize that their investment is going to be worthwhile. And while this journey isn't easy, I want you to know that you're not alone. I am here to help support you, help translate the data, help you navigate this dumpster fire of a symptom that we are, you know, that we're needing to interact with and seek care from. There is a wonderful growing community of people that are walking this path alongside us please be sure to connect with the Success with Sjogren's Sisterhood Facebook group. Although we're a sisterhood, we take our brothers too. It's a free support group with resources, connections that I help run with my team. You can download my free Sjogren's Superhero Starter Kit. It is packed full of valuable tools, tips, great resources that I've used on my journey that are out there that are vetted. And I'll put all those links in the description of this video below. You know, the fast track designation for nipocalumab is incredibly exciting news, but it is part of this process that still has several steps ahead. Clinical trials will need to demonstrate that this drug is both safe and effective before it can be approved or even considered for approval. So in the meantime, what questions do you have about clinical trials or Sjogren's disease treatments? What's giving you hope? Share your experiences in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my Sjogren's friendly tips and videos so you don't miss our next update. And if you haven't watched already, go back and watch my episode from a couple months ago where I talked about my first six months in the Dazodalapep clinical trial. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it informative, please like and subscribe to stay updated on developments in Sjogren's disease and treatments. And until next time, take care and stay informed.